this. All right. So, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, DC's in the house. Late breaks with DC. Uh, Michael uh, is pulling an awesome feat here. He's grabbed four boxes of Skywalker Saga, some of my favorite stuff, as you should know, uh, that is non-sport. Last time, he got a Paul Bettany autograph printing plate, which is uh, pretty awesome, as well as a one-of-one one art card uh, of Padme on her deathbed, covered in flowers and a blue dress. You know the scene if you saw the films. So we are going to knock this out, and we are about to have a really good time. Thank you, Michael. I'm going to thank you ahead of time for awesome. I feel like I am a bit of a master when it comes to knowledge of these cards, what is in here. If you take a look at the signing sheet, you have everybody from all of the movies, including the Clone Wars uh, cartoons series. Um, so there are a lot of interesting autos. There are a lot of interesting uh, characters. The photos are uh, almost exclusively from the movies. I don't believe, other than the autographs, um, if the autograph is from somebody from the animated series, they do have the picture of the animated character. But for the most part, 99.2%, it is from the movies. <laughs> dead, dead, dead Padme, sweet. Um, you'd have to, the art card was actually really well done. It was uh, her looking very resting <clears throat> in her blue dress. And the bed of flowers and her hair was all... Like, the, the art card was very good. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, the, the artist did a fantastic job. And if you think about it, that scene is actually a huge part of the film series. So that was, that was the moment that kind of changed a lot. Led to quite a bit of differencing. The, yeah, 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 well, yeah. Fun fact. Oh, here we go. There's a hit right off the bat. So this is going to be one of the um, schematic cards. This is a schematic for the Rebel Snowspeeder. This one is only out of 99. Let me get something for a background. I don't think you can see through that. So there you go. In case you were wondering how to build a Rebel Snowspeeder, that is how you do it. Little blueprint action. First hit. Now, in addition to this hit, you're also guaranteed an autograph. So, where other Star Wars product, that may be the end, you are going to get an auto here, guaranteed. That is awesome. Norm was the best part of Cheers. Very nice. I'm gonna be getting uh, I'm gonna be getting more hit parade scheduled group breaks as well. So you'll see those late nights with DC. We're gonna have a out of ninety nine card coming up. There it is. Looking forward, sixty five out of ninety nine. Let me get my protection stuff here to keep your cards in that great condition. There we go. All right, back on track. Not a bad way to start at all. Hey, look, there's another one out of 99. 18 out of 99, Path of the Jedi. So, uh, yeah, really good start. 
there's usually only about three numbered cards in addition to your hits uh, in the in the box. Um, that is what I've seen on average from the roughly case I've opened to this stuff, um, including my own personal stuff. So we'll see if we can go beyond that three right now since we have a really good start. Sopranos was a good show if you're into the uh, old school mafia stuff. And uh, Michael, I want to say thank you, by the way. I can't think of starting out the day any better than a good chunk of Star Wars. Speaking of, there it is. There's Watto, Andy Seacomb. Watto being the, uh, the person who kept and looked over Anakin in the beginning. Had him in charge of fixing the droids, improving upon Anakin's ability to do things. So you have your auto, you have your thing. Let's see if we can get more numbered cards. I'd like to see a nice red one of one border. That would make me happy for you. That is correct, Zeon. Jedi mind tricks do not work on him. That's right, I will start the day good, I will end the day good, because the last break I will be doing is going to be a case of Flawless. I'm looking at my sound meters. It uh, it, the sound levels are. It sounds like, it sounds like I'm uh, I'm slapping the cards on the ground. Yeah, I'm not. It's just right next to the microphone. The microphone is to my right, and the cards are being stacked to, right next to it. So I see, I'm seeing level spikes every time I put a card down. <laughs> Trust me, I'm definitely not throwing them. Just a bit close to the mic. I don't have an overhead mic. I have a desk mount mic. Uh, he's an interesting character. Uh, that's the best way that I can put that. He's a very interesting character. To say the least. 
Good old Han. There is your 10% off Authentics. Want to do a little shopping? Get 10% off some autograph stuff from Topps Authentic Star Wars. Uh, it will be. We definitely had it last time. So hopefully there's a nice numbered card in there. And here it is, last pack. It is a tattoo of a shark. And on the other arm, it is a tattoo of a squid. Uh, the tattoo of the squid was actually done in 99 before there was the actual proof discovery of the giant squid. So this was an artist's rendition of what we believed a giant squid to be. Um, <clears throat> it actually represents, and this is going to sound corny, but the yin and yang. Uh, their tails touch if you put my arms together. But this is a, what was, uh, we originally believed to be a docile creature in warm colors. That was a fierce creature done in cool colors. Of course, now, now we find out that giant squid are actually <laughs> giant hunters. So kind of ruined that aspect of it. But I still have the warm colors and cool colors on opposite arms. All the tattoos on my chest and front are earth tone, greens and blues. And um, the tattoo on my back is just all black. Um, Taco, hit up eBay. Um, look up the pup name and number and then sort by sold. It'll tell you what the last one sold for. And then I would put it right around that, that number. That is how I sell things on eBay. Oh, no, not, not don't regret them at all. My son thinks they're really cool. He likes them. And it's funny because I used to play pool and I used to play cards. Uh, and it was funny because I would roll up my sleeves for shots. and like, oh, great. There's literally a pool shark. I mean, I wasn't that good, but it was just funny to see people's face. Now, I was in the Navy, so it is, uh, it's pretty customary to get tattoos when you're in the Navy. All right, so here's an autograph. I have the same one. I dig it. You... Ooh, and yours is better. Yours is out of 99. That's Dave Barclay. He was the puppeteer who was Jabba the Hutt for the films. Um, I, I think this is awesome because Jabba the Hutt is your big gangster bad guy. And this was the guy that operated him. Had to go through all of the ridiculousness of, of getting this giant thing to work. That dude definitely had his work cut out for him. Oh, you're welcome, Zion. I have the same one. Mine's not numbered like yours is. Um, <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> it, is, it is front and center of my collection uh, for non-sports. Just because these movies were so iconic. I was born in 1980. Uh, so we had the beginning of the saga there. Um, when I was old enough and cognitive enough to watch movies, we would watch the old ones. At the time, we were about three to six years old, depending on which one we are watching. And then when the re-releases came out, I was able to go to the theaters and have that experience. And then lastly, when the uh, when the prequels came out, I got to do the midnight showings. Uh, and then the, the most recent ones, I actually got to take my son. My son got to see the final movie um, at the theaters. Because he loves BB-8. He loves Yoda. Uh, every time we play around, I have to be Luke. He has to be Yoda. Uh, he fell asleep halfway through, but he got up just in time to still see some of the fun stuff and he enjoyed it. He liked it. Went to, went to preschool and told all of his friends. The exclamation point. Yeah. Yep. Yep. He's like, I am David Barclay exclamation point. Um, honestly, 
it's not so much the needles, man. Um, in my experience, now it, I'm biased. I have a notoriously high tolerance for pain. It is well known amongst my friends. I used to do stupid things growing up, and it just because I have a very, very high, I have deep nerves, as my uh, doctor liked to put it, that it takes real pressure to feel pain. Um, it feels like, imagine you were scratched by a cat, and then somebody keeps rubbing over that scratch over and over again. That is the best way I can describe a tattoo. It's like somebody, you got a cat scratch, and then somebody's rubbing over it over and over and over again. Um, it depends. I mean, if you want a Viking warrior, or do you have Viking heritage? Do you have Scandinavian heritage or any of the fjords? If so, absolutely, man. I would go for it. If not, then you have to ask yourself why you want a Viking on your back. Uh, not knowingly, Zeon. Uh, so there is, when you're in any military service and you're in an active combat zone, even if you have the most menial, menial job, um, there is personal responsibility. So, um, the aircraft carrier I was on, uh, definitely dropped a lot of bombs in Saudi Arabia. And there were definitely casualties of that because I've seen the videos in our, uh, intelligence uh, rooms. Um, so you have to say that, you know, I was the machinist that powered the ships, that carried the planes, that dropped the bombs that people died for. Oh, here's a nice low-numbered one. Kylo Ren and Snoke, 12 out of 25. Ah, Swedish. Very nice. One of my favorite human beings is from Stockholm. Mr. Dolph Lundgren. Um, yeah, Ripfjord, that name says it all. Uh, Dolph Lundgren, and I, and, and I mean this with all seriousness, one of the greatest human beings on planet Earth. Um, I have his action figures at home. Uh, I considered naming my son's middle name Dolph. Uh, I love Dolph Lundgren, and he is from Stockholm. So, my Swedish friend, hello, I am... I think 2% Swedish and like 3%, um, oh, what is it? Norwegian. So I have a bit of fjord in me and I have a fierce orange beard that I can grow that is very, very Nordic. All right, so we have the auto, now the extra. What is it going to be? Ten percent off. He's great, man, and he's also what people don't realize. Dolph Lundgren has a genius level intelligence. He actually went to the Royal Institute of Technology. Um, he has a degree in chemical engineering. Um, he is very, very smart. He was. He was He-Man in Masters of the Universe. He was uh, Drago in Rocky. Uh, he was also in the um, uh, Dispendables, or Expendables. Yep. Um, what people don't know is he is a major player in the anti-human trafficking uh, scene. Worldwide, he donates a lot of time and a lot of money to raise awareness and help uh, people and prevent human trafficking. That is his call to arms. So not many people know that, but he is 
He is putting in the work to help make a better world. I think your other hit is here. Oh, nope. It, it's going to be last pack. So, something in here should be cool. Again, that mojo. There it is. I see it. Last pack mojo coming through. Dispendables. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yep. Oh, this one's cool. This one is out of 250. How about the Imperial Star Destroyer? I know you were trying to figure out how to create a star, Imperial Star Destroyer. Now you have the blueprints. God help us all. Star Destroyers all over. Really cool. Last pack mojo. All right, moving on to box number three of what is basically a fantasy break for me. <laughs> this is uh, this is spectacular in my eyes. <laughs> I think I'm enjoying this more than anybody else knows. This is good stuff. And if people realized how inexpensive this stuff was to break and get these awesome hits in, I think we would be sold out by now. As Michael swooped in and grabbed the four that I had. Yes, I will. I will post the video. I will also email you a copy of the video so you can have it in your email as well. Absolutely, my friend. I will take care of you. Chewbacca, that is another one that my son is a big fan of. We used to live just outside, in Lakeland, it's, it's about 40 minutes from Disney. So we used to have the season passes um, because it was cheaper to get season passes than to go twice a year. Um, oh my God, this is so great. I am awfully jealous of you. How about young Boba Fett? Now, this kid has also done... Uh, Daniel Logan has done a bunch of other things, too, uh, later in life. Uh, no, give me a second. I do not know what you said in Swedish. Uh, but Daniel Logan also went on to have uh, more credits to his name as an actor. And gets to claim that he is the young Boba Fett, which uh, is pretty dope. So that's the guaranteed auto. We're going to look for the next big hit, which should be an art card medallion. There's 14 out of 25 uh, medallion. I believe there's even swatch cards in here, if I'm not mistaken. As well as, um, yeah, schematics, so lots of stuff. Lots of stuff still to come. And the grammar was spotless. Uh, green light. So, um, I have a list. Um, 
It's only available here. I have to show it to you. Uh, let me finish breaking this box and I'll get it for you. Um, what are you looking for? Because chances are, if, if you're looking for something specific, I can tell you right off the bat. I have most of my stock memorized. I do not know any Swedish at all. I know a lot of languages. Um, I know, I shouldn't say a lot of languages. I know a little bit from a lot of languages. Swedish is not one of them. <laughs> hey, what'd you find, Zeon? Uh, I do not have Dark Knight Hit Parade. Um, the Hit Parade I do have, I can tell you. I have Birds of Prey. I have, I believe, Sig Series. Um, and actually, that one I can read. Oh, there's a another one. That's 91 out of 99. Luke Skywalker, Luke Skywalker, Moisture Farmer. Yep, I believe that is the nickname we gave the quarterback in high school as well. He was also the Moisture Farmer. Um, I have four comics, six series, 2020 six series graded one, 2020 mystery graded, 19 Birds of Prey, and uh, that's it. The other ones are just boxes. <laughs> see on see see tell me that wasn't a classic tell me that movie is not an absolute classic <laughs> oh and it is an art card uh this is going to be from the animated series from Paul Shires. Uh, this is the... Oh, what is his name? He is... I, I just started watching it, too. Um, he's the head of the one... Of the, the platoon. Not the 501st, but the other one. Can't remember his name off the top of my head. I'd have to look... Um, but he's one of the, uh, one of the, gen not the generals, but, uh, captain. Yeah, sorry, Manos. Manos. Um, yeah, so if you, if you go to dacardworld.com and you're looking for a personal break, uh, just simply find what you're looking for. Uh, it'll give you the option to break live. Hit the break live. Uh, if it is something that I have in stock, um, then I can do it for you typically between my uh, group breaks. If it's something that I don't have in stock, they can hold it for tomorrow and you can put in the notes um, when you are... Um, when you're checking out, it'll say any personal notes. You can put late nights with DC if you want it done live late at night. And it will be brought to me in the afternoon when I get here. And I will break for you when you jump on. Pretty, uh, pretty easy. Try to be accommodating. The warehouse is not open. It closes 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it is locked and sealed. Uh, yeah, the, that's the, the, that's the character's like resting face. That's the way they animated them. It's actually, it's a pretty good job. I wouldn't be surprised if that guy, the artist probably had something to do with the, uh, animated series. I'd have to look him up, the artist. Um, but especially the way he signs his name, he signs it like he's, uh, uh, super famous.
Um, yes, if you order off the list, I can process it. Um, it's probably not going to break now because this is going to take me until 7 o'clock, which is the first break. But if my first 7 o'clock break doesn't sell out, which is the case of the cup, um, there are just a few spots left. If that doesn't sell out, I'd do a personal during that time and I would just push it back. Um, so let me check on that after these five packs before the last box. Um, and I can give you a better answer because I want to afford Michael all of his time. As I would afford all of you your time. Making sure that wasn't a one-on-one red. It wasn't. It was a different set. Yeah, give me a second. Um, almost done. I got two more packs left. Um, we've already got the autographs out of here. We've already got the art card. So uh, just going through to look, see if there's any more low-numbered things. All right. Uh, give me two seconds, Michael. I just need to check real quick to see where hockey's at so I can give a better answer uh, for more personal stuff. So there's 13 spots remaining in uh, the case of Upper Deck Cup. Chances are in a half hour that's not going to sell out. So I would have until 8 o'clock to do personal breaks. Um, I'm going to real quick take a screenshot. Um, this is what I have left. While we're doing that, I'm going to get the packs out of Michael's box <clears throat> so we can continue hunting for the autograph and other hits that is guaranteed here. All right, take a screenshot. It's exiting in five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, man, whole family breaks. I dig it. Um, we have some interesting things. The The Marvel premiere is fun. Uh, the Star Wars is gone. That was out pretty quick. Um, there are just some absolute banger hits uh, in this set. A lot of high-end autographs, as we've seen with the Paul Bettany auto. Um, art cards, 101s. So uh, these tend to go pretty quick. I'm probably going to try to see if we have a case to smuggle a case back here. Uh, to open because this stuff is popular and it's very inexpensive. That is the key. It is a good time for low dough. And I don't know about you, I'm a pretty cheap date. I like a good time for low dough. <clears throat> good old Shmi Skywalker. So, this scene, uh, my son makes me, <laughs> since I'm always Luke when we play and he's always Yoda, of course it is me carrying him around on my back, <laughs> uh, running around the house and jumping on the couch. That is, uh, that is basically how we play. He is my backpack. It's like $41 a box. And for $41, you're guaranteed one autograph and one other uh, big hit, like 
a like one of one art card or a schematic. There are um, like patches in here. There are a lot of different things. Um, so for $41, you're getting two big hits, not to mention the numbered cards that are in here too. Um, and they do have one-on-one -on -one variants. I've actually hit one of those myself. Um, I'll do a recap of these four boxes when this box is over. Oh, I know, exactly, Martin. That's what I'm saying, man. It's it's very inexpensive. It used to be, when the first stuff first came out, it was 100 bucks a box. Or it was right around 100 bucks a box. Like 80 to 100 um, and then as the, uh, as the movie, the last movie came out, uh, the last movie set came out. So this one went down cause this came out before, um, I believe the last part of the movie, the last set of movies. So our last actual movie, that's what I meant to say. Um, so anytime something new comes out, the old stuff goes on sale. Yes, $41 is nothing for a whole box of cards. Well, I mean, it's $41 if you want to speak existentially. But it is a very insignificant amount in comparison to other stuff that exists. Order 66, the end of the Jedi's, allegedly. <laughs> yeah, there you go, it's true. Yeah, if it's considering where you're at, yep, yep, I would concur. All right, so you did get another Dave Barclay, but this one is not numbered. So this one you can throw on eBay or give to another Star Wars friend of yours, and you can keep the one that's numbered. See, I was like, Dave! Dave? Dave's not here, man. No, man, it's me, Dave. Dave? Dave's not here. Good old... Good old Dave. Yeah, unfortunately, the only Swedish meatballs I've ever had were at Ikea. And I don't know if that is a good representation or not. All right, so I am pulling for another art card. I do want to see another 101 jump in your hands. That is what I think would be cool. But a schematic also would not make me angry. And that is what we got. Uh, so this one you don't have yet. Uh, this is on a 250. This is going to be an ATSAT. ATST. So I know for a fact you have the um, AT AT. You now have the ATSAT, the Star Destroyer, and the Speeder. You are collecting them all. No duplicates there. And now we're just looking for low numbers. Uh, it depends on what you're looking for. Zeon, if you're looking for autographs, absolutely. Uh, if you're looking for 
um, the big banger hits that have diamonds in them and, uh, you know, uh, crazy pieces of jersey, it's not going to be your thing because this is pretty much just autographs. It all depends. Um, I would say out of the five autographs, I recognize maybe two or three. The other two or three uh, typically are low round picks, bench warmers, people I haven't heard of. But that was Tom Brady. So we'll see how that works out. You're all about that base. All about that base. All your base are belong to us. Um, I think you're guaranteed at least one on card, which is nice. In the past, they didn't have guarantees. So, uh, it's subjective, man. It is absolutely subjective. All right, that is a wrap on four boxes of Skywalker Saga. A fun way to start the day. All right, so let me get a backdrop for this real quick. That'll work. My little mini projector screen. So you have out of 250 an at... Oh, let me just get this real. Okay. You have the at sat. Out of 250, you have the Imperial Destroyer. Uh, and then out of 99, you have the Rebel Snowspeeder. So you can go home and build your own. Um, I know you probably are going to build the Snowspeeder first, Michael, because that's the most relative for you. I know that's the one that you're probably going to use. All right, so recap the four boxes. You got Luke out of 99. You have Dagobah Training out of 99. You have Looking Forward out of 99. You have Yoda Unveiled out of 25. You have Kylo and Snoke out of 25. You have Dave Barclay, exclamation point, out of 99. Andy Seacomb, Daniel Logan, Dave Barclay, and you have an art card, one of one. I would say that is a pretty nice haul considering how inexpensive the product is. Congratulations. We'll get that to you ASAP. Let me just